Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I'm going to be doing a review of A Betrayal in Winter by Daniel Abraham. This is the second book in the Long Price Quartet. Took me a while to get through mainly because I was traveling to the US. I was reading it as I was traveling to the US and then I was there for three weeks and I did no reading during that time because my first two weeks were crazy busy and then my third week I was really sick. And so I just had no ability to read to be perfectly honest during that entire trip, my November month reading wise was incredibly poor. When I came back to the UK, I decided to restart it. Boy oh boy, this was a ride. So Betrayal in Winter for me felt darker than uh, A Shadow in Summer. I really liked the fact that it picks up about 10 years after the events of the first book and you are seeing the characters living with the consequences of their decisions. They're dealing with them in very different ways. You know, you have Ota, I'm not gonna put any spoilers in, but he is dealing with something that he did at the end of the first book. And then you have Marty dealing with the way that certain relationships of, of his have turned out with, with other characters in the story. And I just, I think, you know, we do have morally gray characters here, but I think Abraham does morally gray characters very differently to some of the other authors that I really, enjoy like Parker or Abercrombie. For some reason I, I feel a little bit detached from the characters but not in a bad way. I feel like with Abercrombie's characters or Parker's characters they feel like me. I feel very attached to them. I feel like they're a part of who I am or vice versa. Whereas with Abraham's characters, I, I do really relate to them in certain ways, but I'm almost, I almost feel like I see them through a different lens, which is really interesting. And I, I don't know whether that's just because of the way that he tells the story, but I really liked the way that this book is just about living with the choices that you've made and having to deal with that fact. I think the character work is just really quite phenomenal. It's done really subtly as well, because while there are changes in their characters, I would argue that the core of who they are is, is, is still the same. But we're seeing different dynamics present themselves because of the way that the first book ended with other characters in this second book. And I just, I really like the way that they felt like the same characters that we know and we love, but they're different of what has happened to them previously. And I think it was just done really subtly. It didn't feel like this big jarring experience. It just felt very subtle and there was nuance in it. And I think that's really hard to do in fantasy. And I think he did it really well. I think it's hard to do in general. I just, I think he executed it really well. There was one particular character that I really enjoyed in this story that is not in the first book, and that is Idan. We're in a, in a different place in this one. In the first book, we are, you know, we're in predominantly in Saraket. In this one, we are in Marchi. This is where Ota's family is, his brothers and his father, who is the Kai. What's really interesting is, you know, we have Idan, who is a sister, and she's incredibly intelligent, miles ahead of the others. And yet she is looked down upon because she is a woman in society. Now you might think, oh great, another you know, poor woman in society, doesn't have any rights, smarter than everybody else, but is looked down upon, blah, blah, blah. We've seen this trope done over and over again. I just, I think the way that he did it was incredibly sensitive. I think the way that he presented it Dawn was just perfect because she is a very conflicting character for me because I identify with her. I think every woman can identify with Adan. There's this one particular part where she talks about how society is kind of set up against women. And it's just this, it's just this absolutely beautiful, just paragraph of her just talking about the injustice of that. As I was reading it, I was like, yeah, I've experienced these things myself and I've felt these things myself and all the time. She's incredibly relatable as an intelligent, bright young woman, but then she does some really, really messed up crap in this book. And it makes you feel very conflicted about her because you understand why she's doing it. You understand what her motives are, to a degree you buy into her motives. I mean, I did. Would I go to the extent that she necessarily goes to? Probably not, but you can't help but feel like she is forced in that position because she is the person that should probably be ruler. But she was born a woman, she cannot, even though she is vastly more qualified, arguably, than anybody else to do it. And I just, I think that whole commentary on her position in society, also being a noble woman, is really interesting compared to, say, like a commoner. I think most people would probably have this expectation that because she's a noble woman, she's more free, but in fact, she's actually more in prison than anybody else because she has expectations set upon her to marry for political reasons. and. And all of this stuff and I, I just I thought that whole subplot was just done really well and I think Abraham writes women just phenomenally and I, I can't wait to see how 
other female characters come into other books and I really hope she's in the next book. Doubt it, but I really hope she is. I guess the next two, Ota and Marty, I, I talked about both of them in my previous review. I really liked both of their character developments in this book, as I mentioned earlier, so I'm not going to talk about them too much, but I think Ota in particular, he was a favourite character of mine in the first book and he's, a, he's still my favourite character, I think, so far, as well as Idan. But I think in terms of across both books, Ota is definitely the one that takes it for me. But there's this kind of quiet, rebellious nature to him that I really like. I think he's quite thoughtful and I think he's learned some things about himself because of what happened in book one and you can see that it's weighing down on him. You can see that his fa relationship with his family is weighing down on him and it really hurts him and that he's really trying to change things and, and question the status quo. That's what I really like about Ota is that he never does it in a, sh I mentioned this in my first review, he never does it in a shouty shouty way. It's, it's always like quietly rebellious. He does it in a very thoughtful way that I think makes it more impactful. He doesn't ever come across as arrogant or like he knows better than anybody else. He knows that he's very green. He has a couple of people around him that I think support him very well and complement his personality really well. And I just, I, I can't wait to see how his character continues to develop as he gets older. And same for Marty, I, I liked Marty's arc in this one as well. I particularly like this whole thread around his relationship with one of the characters in the first book. I'm not going to mention who it is in, in case you haven't read it, but I thought that his whole struggle with like family and having his own family was really interesting and I again I can't wait to see how that continues to develop in the next books. In this one we have a new poet that we follow, we have, I don't know how you pronounce his, his name but I think it's Tremai and I really like his arc as well, I really liked his character, he's kind of representative of, of what Marty could have become if he'd you know taken the path that maybe he should have taken. I really liked the fact that Tremai is, is kind of like a bit of a moral centre of this book in certain ways. He has this really interesting relationship with Idan, and then he has this really fascinating relationship with Marty as well, and he's kind of caught in the middle of all this politics and intrigue. He doesn't like it, but unfortunately he is a part of it just because of his position and also because of the people that he's involved with. And I really liked the way that his character kind of ended up at the end of the book. It felt really bad for him. And I really hope we get more time with him as well, because I really like his character. I have a feeling we're probably not gonna have as much time with him in the next one but I hope we do because I, I do really like his character. One of the other things that I really liked is the themes that are covered in this book. I, I talked about you know treatment of women. I mean obviously the book is called A Betrayal in Winter so there's a lot around betrayal and loyalty, family dynamics and, and these are all things that are really important to me. These are things that I think about a lot and I think they're handled in a way that is very poetic but very realistic. Abraham presents moral dynamics in a really beautiful way. It never feels preachy, it never feels like he's trying to make a statement. It just feels like this is the circumstances of the world that they live in and these are the decisions that they're faced with. And there you go. I actually think when it comes to themes, I think Abraham might be up there as one of my favourite authors who, who writes about thematic topics really well. And then the way that he weaves it into the story is just super impressive as well. The other thing I'm going to mention, there's going to be two other things I'm going to mention in terms of what I really liked about it. I really like the way that Abraham in general does romance especially in this book. It feels very core to the story, but it never it's never the core part of the story, if that makes sense. I like romance less and less in my books at the moment for a number of different reasons that I won't get into, but I really, really like the way the romance was presented between a number of different characters in this story. It's Fate of Black, so there's nothing too crazy in it. And I just think he he has this really great balance between like having it there and being a part of the story and the character's development, but then it not being the focal point. And I just, yeah, I don't know. I think that's quite hard to do. And I think he just does it really well. I really liked the ending of this book. I think his ability to story tell and, and converge everything together into that big crescendo, I think is, phenomenal. I actually think he's one of the best authors to, to be able to do this. Those last couple of chapters were absolutely wild. I had to read them in one go. Just the way that everything came together. I would say his books are a little bit predictable because obviously you know what's going to happen. If you've read the first book and as you go through the second book you know what's going to happen. It's just how it's going to happen. And the way that it all converged at the end and the way that everything kind of came together was just really satisfying. And I think the build-up is just really, it does create a little bit of anxiety. Even though you know how it's going to end, it does create anxiety and it creates this just like absolute desire 
desire to like binge the book. I thought the ending was very satisfying and I can't wait to see how the characters developed even more in an autumn war, which I believe is set like another like 10 to 14 years in advance. I remember that this book is set 14 years after, not 10 years after the events of the first book. So I can't wait to, to see how that manifests. The other thing, I know I said only two things left, but I do have one last thing to mention that I liked is the, the context that you get around like the mining and the economics of the of Machai and the Andat that we have in this one is called Stone Made Soft. He can essentially manipulate matter, I guess. The Andat wanted to, they could collapse mountains, you know, create tunnels and mines and, and things like that. It was very cool. I learned a lot about mining that I didn't think I ever would, but it was very interesting. I guess the only negative is that, and this was something that I mentioned in my first review as well, is that it can be quite slow in certain places. These books are not fast paced, they're slow. You're really getting time with the characters, you're really getting the context and you're really going along this journey with them. It's not a, a crazy whirlwind of an you know action sequence or anything like that, but I like that. I think to tell the stories in this way, I think the best way to do it is in that way. And I think Abraham made the right decision in not making it super, super action packed. I do think the next one, I mean, it's called An Autumn War, so I'm assuming there's a battle. I'm assuming that one will probably be a little bit more faster paced, but I like the pacing in this one, actually. I liked it more than I liked it in the first one. I think the first one was maybe a little bit too slow for me. So, I mean, I still gave it 4.5, but this one, I think the pacing picked up, especially from like 50% onwards, because it was, things were starting to converge. And I really, like I said before, I really liked that ending and I really liked like the fact that the first half was setting the scene and then the second half was it really picking up. So overall, I ended up giving it a 4.75 stars. Uh, I will give a five stars soon, I'm sure, but I really loved it. It was borderline five for me. I would not be surprised that if I, when I finish the series, I go back and I increase that to a five, but I really like the character work. I thought it was phenomenal. I think there were some really interesting themes covered in this one. And I think the overall pacing and just progression of the story was really satisfying. So let me know if you've read this book. I know, you know, Alan is the, the chief harbinger of the Long Price Quartet. I know Katrina loves it, Angela loves it. Ina's read the first one and I knew she really loved that. But let me know if you've read A Portrayal in Winter and what your thoughts were on it. I think I'd love to talk more about it with you guys down below. So let me know how you got on or you know, even if you're just thinking about it and you're not really sure whether it's right for you, let me know what your worries are and, and we can chat about it. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there, folks. I hope you all have a lovely day. As always, stay safe, take care, and I'll speak to you soon.